Hey everyone, it is Wendy O here. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial of the Bollinger Bands. Um, this is going to be part of my basic technical analysis series, so if you're interested in learning more about other basic indicators, go ahead and check those out. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank my sponsor, Coinigy, for sponsoring this series, and also thank you for allowing me to use your version 2 beta platform. If you guys are interested in Coinigy, I have got a ref link down below. You're more than welcome to check that out. Um, they offer a lot of really cool services that make trading a little bit easier, and we all know that we like easy. I know that I do. So let's go ahead and talk about the Bollinger Bands. Let's get into it. So Bollinger Bands were invented by Mr. John Bollinger, who's been in the game for a while. Um, first, I'm going to talk to you guys about the boring stuff, the math that is backed by the Bollinger Bands and how they are created. So I actually got my resources from Investopedia and from Coinigy. Coinigy has a really amazing um, informational area you can go ahead and go to if you have any questions. And they answer a lot of things and they've got tutorials, all really cool things. So go ahead and check that out as well. But I'm going to go ahead and read directly from Investopedia. So to compute the simple moving average of the project or stock, you typically would use a 20-day SMA, which is a simple moving average. A 20-day moving average would average out the closing prices for the first 20 days as the first point. The next data point would drop the earliest price, add the price on day 21, and take the average. Next, you would apply the standard deviation of the securities price, security, stock, crypto, whatever. So standard deviation measures variance, which in turn measures volatility. And that's what the Bollinger Bands are all about. They measure volatility, which is extremely important when you're trading crypto or traditional stocks. So we're going to go ahead now and talk about the three bands that are present on the Bollinger Bands and what they do and why they are important. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in over here. So right now I'm looking at the Bitcoin daily chart. I've got my bands put on. If you want to go ahead and add them on yourself, you would just go to the indicators tab here, type in Bollinger Band. Another thing that I want to add with this is that you can go ahead, go ahead and adjust the settings on any of the bands. Um, to do that, you would just select your indicator, you would right click it, and you go to format, and then you can go ahead and adjust them accordingly. Me personally, I use the standard settings. That's what, that is what works best for me and my trading strategy, but if something else works better for you, go ahead and do it. It's all about making money and being as accurate as you can. So there's that piece of information, but let's talk about the middle band first, which is the simple moving average. Um, with this, it kind of, what it does is it tells, tells you kind of where the market is, is going or what's happening with it. Um, it measures, it, it measures the intermediate term trend. And what, I, when I say intermediate term trend, what I'm talking about is you see how we've got this uptick here on the SMA. Well, this is telling me that the market is essentially bullish. Um, back here in about November of 2018, we had this downpour here. This is telling me that we are a little bit bearish. Another thing with Bollinger Bands, what you can do, you can use these as support and resistance. And I'm going to talk about how you can do that a little bit later when I further analyze um, the upper and the lower bands. But basically, the middle um, SMA, the simple moving average, it's bracketed in between um, the upper and the lower bands. So. There's that. Another thing too, when I'm talking about in support and resistance and bearish and bullish, you can see here, we were underneath the SMA. So this would be considered bearish, at least to me. Um, when we were able to break and pop up above over here in about, um, I wanna say December-ish, 2018, we were able to break this area of resistance um, pop up. If we flipped it into support, we popped up and then we retested the upper Bollinger Band here as resistance and then we drop back down so the, these are ways that you can use them it's up it's really up to you how you want to do it um, another thing about um, the bands we're going to talk about the upper and the lower bands so the more volatile movements that's when the bands open up and they expand really big um, when we're talking about less volatile price action you're talking about the contraction here also known as a squeeze which i'm going to talk about that too but anytime the bands are big and open like this um, there was a volatile movement that occurred and we saw back here um, and this is the daily again you can go ahead and see how there we had all this squeezing here and then we had this big relief here um, essentially. Also, too, I want to point out, you can utilize Bollinger Bands on any time frames. Coinigy has a lot of really cool features, a lot of different time frames. They've got the three-day available, four-hour, hour, all different types of stuff, even two weeks, even the monthly. So you can analyze these on any time frames. No matter what you're charting, you can go ahead and um, it is important, at least to me when I'm charting this stuff, I look at multiple time frames to kind of 
analyze what's going on in the market because sometimes things can change. So that's also another cool feature that they have. And Bollinger Bands work just as good on any of your time frame. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about um, the bands. So some traders do say that um, when price is hitting the upper band here, it can kind of indicate when price is overbought. When it's hitting the lower band here, it could indicate that price has been oversold. Obviously, when using this indicator, um, John Bollinger himself recommends that you throw on some under, other indicators such as RSI or MACD to kind of help see what's going on because it's not 100% that just because we've hit the top of the band here that we were super overbought or we hit the bottom here and they were super oversold. So it's kind of good to use other factors, whether it's volume, volume indicators, RSI, MACD, whatever it is. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about the squeezing or the contraction on Bollinger Bands and why that's important. So when we have low volatility like we're seeing here in the squeezing it's going to indicate a massive move is coming and i like to use the word volatile because it makes sense like we you see right here where you've got all this contraction all this contraction and then we have this huge move that comes um previously when we were in um, this squeeze that is the correct term for it i call it contraction it's easier for me to understand that way but when we had all this squeeze this big old squeeze here we really weren't doing too terribly much we were just kind of mosing on and then we had this volatility incoming and then there was a big pump um also too one thing that i want to point out when you get a pinch on the bollinger bands you are going to sometimes get a reverse in movement. What do I mean by a pinch? Back over here in, um, what is it, in August, we started pinching the bands and we got a reversal. So when you get a pinch, sometimes it could indicate a reversal. It's something to look out for. So we started pinching, pinching, and then we had a dump and a reversal. Um, back over here, we were pinching, 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 pinching the bands, and then we were finally able to get enough momentum and pop up. So that is really how to use the Bollinger Bands. There are a couple things that I do want to throw in here just for anyone else that's interested. Um, this information is from Investopedia. Um, so approximately 90% of price action occurs between the two bands. So we do see a lot of action staying within the bands here. However, there are some times when we, are, when we break out above um, the bands. And you can see that right here, we're able to break out. So not all price action stays within the bands, but essentially it's like a channel, very similar to the Keltner channel, um, which I will not be discussing in this video, but it's very similar, but you do sometimes get a breakout. Another thing is um, any breakout um, above or below the bands indicates a major event that had occurred. We can tell that that happened here, this major event with this glorious pump we just had. Um, we pumped and we broke out above the bands. And also too, one thing about the Bollinger Bands, um, they're not a standalone trading system. And what that means is it's always good to throw on some other indicators that work for you, whether it be Fibonacci retracements, RSI, Stochastic, MACD, whether you're utilizing volume, support and resistances, all that kind of stuff. So Bollinger Bands are a tool that helps us kind of predict where the market's going. However, it's not 100%, just like any other indicator that you will hear me talking about, they're not 100%, but they are good at kind of helping you see what's going on in the market. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and thank you.